And there's a toughness to Penn State's defenses over time that has been obvious. Every time we played against, you know, Penn State team, it was just the way they hit, the way they swarmed the football was obvious. And the last thing is just they finish. And so just being finishers in life, being finishers in football, and just being finishers in every single thing that you do. So to me, the effort, the toughness, the finish, that's what I want us to be able to continue to build off of and keep growing as I'm here, leading this football team to do great things. This guy's got me riled up yeah, right I'm ready now, to play man. right now. Let's do it. Ready for my helmet on. It's only April, baby. I like it. What's going on, folks? We are launching the Retain the Roar campaign here at State Media in partnership with Happy Valley United. This is extremely important to me personally and the entire program moving forward. I came to Penn State in some of the darkest times. I deeply care about this university and this football program. That is why I'm done talking. I'm going to lead by example, and I'm working to pull a bunch of other lettermen together to get behind this campaign. It is integral for us to participate in NIL and not only participate, but dominate to match the expectations that we all have for this program. We're in it to win championships, so let's put our money where our mouth is. I'm taking the first step. I hope that you all follow me. Our goal is to raise $500,000 to close this spring transfer portal cycle and ensure that we retain the roar. College football tees, college basketball tees, whatever you need, Mercury has you covered with the best merch out there. We're talking about high quality clothing, inexpensive, and the best part is I have a 15% discount for everybody who goes and gets some right now. Use the code below, hit the link in the description, and go get your merch now. Use the code to get 15% off. What are you waiting on? Go do it. This is State Media, and we're back with Letterman's Media Day. I'm here with Aeneas Hawkins. I'm Jace Cabinda, former linebacker, and we're here with our D coordinator, Tom Allen. We're happy. He's finally in the blue and white, man. We recruited him over here. Happy to have him, man. Appreciate you taking the time. Well, hey, I'm thrilled to be here. Excited to join you guys. But, man, just a special, special place. I feel blessed to be part of it. A special place that is also known <laughs> as LBU. Yeah. You are now the keeper of the LBU tradition. Yeah. What kind of... What kind of weight is that having that on your shoulders of keeping up that tradition at LBU here you at Penn know, State? It's a good weight, um, for sure. You, you feel the the pride that that room represents, uh, the, the history, all the great players. Uh, so when you recruit somebody here, you want to make sure they understand that. When you coach the guys here, you want to make sure they have a clear understanding of that, that uh, there's a standard and expectation that's been set here, and we got to live up to it, and got to live up to it every day. And uh, uh, it's a... Uh, it's an awesome thing. And you think about, you know, the very position that I played, that I coach, uh, that I that I believe runs the whole defense. Uh, that's the place that I'm coaching at that has a ton of pride and a bunch of great players in the past. We just got to develop some more of them. No doubt. Obviously, LBU has a ton of culture, but really the Penn State defense yes. for years and years on end has, no has upheld a standard of excellence throughout time. So I guess my question is, in year one, how do you plan to add to that culture that's already been instilled? Well, and I think that's a great point. You know, you got to add to it. You know, nothing stays the same, you know, even though we had great success the previous season defensively. Um, got some new faces, got some of the same guys as well. But, but what are you doing to build off of? What are you doing to grow the culture, grow the expectation? And and that's on the players. And that's on us as coaches. We got to embrace that. And we got to want that. And we got to realize that, that you got to be able to recreate that every year. And the, the edge that you play with and the confidence you play with, that's special to a group of guys. And and the, and the trust they have in each other is a powerful thing. And But I'm just such a believer that everything rises and falls off leadership. You know, so obviously I've got to be the leader of that, but also our players. And we got a lot of really good players here that have been here uh, at all three levels, defensive line, linebackers, and in the secondary that have a ton of pride in being a part of this great Penn State defense that, that they now represent every time they put on that helmet, every time they step on that field. And, and I see, uh, when I first got here, uh, kind of talking about what you said about the standard of the past. And I said, okay, guys, what is that? How can you articulate? What does that stand? I mean, give me three, you know, words that kind of really embody the standard. And we came up with three things. They came up with three things. The first one is effort. They're going to play with relentless, just effort, effort, effort every single day, every time you step the field, because you control that. Number two is toughness. And there's a toughness to Penn State's defenses over time that has been obvious. Every time we played against, you know, Penn State team, it was just the way they hit, the way they swarmed the football was obvious. And the last thing is just they finish. They finish. And so just being finishers in life, being finishers in football, and just being finishers in every single thing that you do. So to me, the effort, the toughness, the finish, that's what I want us to be able to continue to build off of and keep growing as I'm here leading this football team to do great things. 
This guy's got me riled up yeah, right, I'm ready now, to play man. right now. Let's do it. Ready for my helmet on. It's only April, baby. I like it. What's going on, y'all? Christian Hackenberg with State Media in the Pocket. This segment is brought to you by Uts. Uts has a phenomenal line of potato chips and other snacks. We were fortunate enough to be able to enjoy them all weekend. They kept us fed and ready for all of these interviews that you all are about to enjoy. They've been a fantastic partner of ours, and we're looking forward to continuing to bring you guys exclusive content here at State Media. Nah, man, you know, while you were at Indiana, obviously you were the leader over there. Obviously you had plenty of battles at Penn State. You know, what kind of intrigued you about coming here, about this job, about being here at Penn State, and maybe some of the impressions you had at Penn State as you were leading that Indiana team over the past few years? Yeah, well, first of all, you know, Coach Franklin was always the head coach the eight years that we played against Penn State. And uh, so just the, the respect I had for him, uh, the way his teams competed, um, you know, there was, like you said, we've already mentioned the, the toughness piece that stuck out to me, how hard they hit, you know, being a defensive guy, being a linebacker guy for my whole coaching career, man, that, that stuck out to me right away. Uh, I thought the athleticism of all three levels, once again, was was uh, very special to Penn State. You know, you have some, some maybe some Big Ten teams that were really physical teams but maybe don't have the athleticism all across the board that I felt like Penn State had. It's like they had the best of everything in regards to that. And, and also, I think to me was uh, to be at a place that, that expects great things that you got a fan base that expects you to be competing for championships. You have a, a team that's expecting to be, you know, now in this new world of college football in the playoffs to go win a national championship. So to me, I wanted to be at a place that loves football, is passionate about this great game as in both the university as well as the fan base. And then also you think about just the, the expectations of the players. And something that stuck out to me is how hard they played in games. And now that I've been here coaching spring practices, now number 13 is tonight. Uh, man, our kids practice hard. And I love every bit of it. You talk about kids practicing hard, finishing to the football, physicality, all crucial aspects of any defense that's yeah. going to perform at a high level. I think it's one thing when you have a coach that's telling you to live that way, but it's different when you have guys on the yeah. team who are actively portraying that. So I want to ask you, with practice 13 coming up, with spring ball ending, who are guys on that defense that you've seen step up as leaders throughout the spring? Yeah, that's a great point. And, and when I first got here, I really did a, tried to do a great job identifying some of those guys, you know, because I played against them, you know, so I kind of knew who I felt like those guys were. And then I got a chance to get to know them and then uh, watch them work out. And so uh, Zane Durant is one who really has risen in my mind uh, from a leadership perspective. Uh, then I, and another one, you know, Dan Sutton is a guy that's a big physical guy, but man, he's he, he commands the respect of his, of his peers. Um, KJ Wynn it's another one. Kobe King is another one. Uh, I feel like those guys, uh, Jay Reed's another one. The guys that have just kind of um, how they handle their business every day. How are they in the weight room? How are they during meetings? How are they during the jog throughs, the walk throughs, the actual practice reps, you know? And uh, Dom DeLuca is another one that just continues to, to ooze out of just high care factor. You know, guys that, uh, um, and I think the thing that I've noticed here amongst those guys, and I could mention several others, is that if it's not right, they're not afraid to speak up and call you out. And that's called accountability. So I always think about accountability having three levels to it. First of all, it's when a coach holds his players accountable, but that's the base level. That's what you have to do as coaches. Well, when it goes to another level, those players start holding themselves accountable. But when it really takes off, then those players start holding each other accountable. And when that's the case, like I, I've seen from several of our guys on defense, that's when you know you have a chance to have a special group. Absolutely, man. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, Man, I don't even think I got anything else for you, man. We we really covered it all, man. We appreciate your time. Appreciate You're very having welcome. you. Well, I'm blessed to be here. I'm excited. We're ready to get this season rolling. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, coach. Thank you, guys. Right.